I'm going to record the session. Yeah, so so now it should work, and and that that we are going to talk about uh, um, this global issues or this this global uh, program in first of all your own learning journey. So everybody gets twelve competencies. Everybody gets in the beginning an assessment. Then we look how is your level of competence. And due to your level, you will receive your own learning journey. So when we have 50 students, they might have 50 different kinds of um, different kinds of levels or knowledge of, of these topics. And uh, what, what we did is that we checked some of these most relevant skills. So the skills which are relevant for global business knowledge, First of all, because you're studying international business, what about the learning agility? I mean, most of you know it is a lifelong learning process, not only for the last generation, but also for your generation. What about strategic and critical thinking, which you need in your future job as, a, as an international manager or global manager? Openness and curiosity is very relevant in an, uh, in an international job. So to be curious about other cultures, to uh, also um, to look at uh, um, the issues from different angels, to, to be open, not just always to evaluate it as good or bad, or it is dirty. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, I also needed to experience it when I'm when I when I went from Germany to Brazil. So it looks completely different here uh, that the streets are not are not uh, well organized um, that that also uh, uh, the houses uh, th th that you have a lot of problem with with energy or with internet connection sometimes when it's raining a lot so these are very relevant issues um, and 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 you don't need to be uh, biased in this case no? so um, so the point is that you need to be open or open-minded in in this specific uh, point of view. Um, so perception or knowledge of cultural differences. I mean, um, first of all, or the first step in developing a global mindset is to get to know where do you come from? So what is your cultural background? What is the way of how you perceive or interpret uh, information? How do you make sense of it? Um, so, um, I mean, we are also triggered by, by television or by news, uh, and this is very relevant to get to know. So how do Germans think or perceive? How do people from India think? So uh, it's also a lot of culturally driven. And then we are going to the next kind of competence, interpersonal engagement. So at the end, when you're doing international business, it's relevant to connect it's relevant to connect with others. It's relevant uh, that that you're trying to network, and perhaps uh, we are doing this in this session that you can network with people from other countries that you can that you can get to know them, um, or that when you have some questions about how to do business in Brazil or how to do business in Germany or how to do business in India, this might be completely uh, different you now because we have different institutions. Now, so, um, and the point is that your profession will be a manager and your profession will be an international manager. And what needs an international manager? It needs to ask questions because the way it looks like in Brazil or in India is completely different to perhaps your location or where you are grown up. And, and this is something which you don't know even when I'm when I'm uh, looking a lot of companies from Germany, they are going to Switzerland and Austria. You would say, ah, they all speak German. That's right. But the way they do business might be very different. And not and, and sometimes there are also resentments or there are also conflicts between countries. No, I mean, you also know it from India with neighboring countries. No, and, and not everybody is perhaps in the beginning welcome. 
But the point is that international business is people business. And the way you treat the supplier, the way you treat a business partner is very important. And, um, and when you don't know it, you need to ask questions. Uh, in some cultures, it's perhaps that people are asking more questions or less questions. Sometimes it's important to ask each student, what do you think? Because nobody is lifting the hand or nobody is saying anything in the classroom. I mean, we are having an, an international global classroom today. So, and this is communication. Yeah? So, and we will talk about different cultural models. We will talk about a step-by-step -step approach. But when I'm repeating it, the most relevant issue in developing a global mindset is to know your own mindset. How is it triggered by your culture? How is it triggered by your education? How is it triggered by your parents? The way we um, perceive, uh, for example, the boss has a lot to do with how your parents were, uh, um, how your parents have been to you, if they were more authoritarian or not. So, for example, in Netherlands or in in Denmark or Sweden or Norway, um, the adult is like a facilitator. The uh, your parents help you, and in Mexico and perhaps in India or some other countries, it's more top down. You cannot disagree your father or your mother, um, and this is different. So the way how you perceive a boss worldwide could even be triggered by your how 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 were your parents to you and this might be completely different in the netherlands where people are then uh, included in the decision making where you can disagree the the boss from netherlands where you can say no i have a different opinion of what what you think about uh, and this is very relevant for you uh, to see that it is a lot culturally driven about how you perceive the world but you only will get to know it when you're crossing borders, when you're going into the neighboring country that you can see, ah, people are doing the things differently. The behavior is different. And it is for you now relevant not to evaluate it as good or bad, or my culture is better than yours. It is about to connect. I mean, we will talk about cultural differences, but at the end, it is to look at uh, what do you have in common? What do you like? Do you like sports or cricket or baseball or American football or soccer? And these are things to connect with others in the beginning and not just, ah, you don't eat pork and and then what about uh, Hinduism or what about uh, different other religions? These are conflicting areas, politics as well as, con as conflicting areas. But the point is, how can you connect? Ah, okay, uh, you have nice shoes from Nike. Are you running? Yes, me too. Or uh, wife could say, ah, oh, you have a nice bag from, from Louis Vuitton. I like this uh, brand. And try to connect and not always try to look at what, what are the most difficult uh, uh, parts in that. And this is what we will talk about. We will talk about how to, um, how to find a win-win situation. Um, so I will give you an example of uh, Carlos Goshen. So Carlos Goshen, uh, he he was a leader uh, of uh, Nissan and Renault. And some of you might know that the French and the Japanese culture that they are, are a little bit more what we talk about ethnocentric. They have values. Um, I'm not telling you that they believe they are better than others, but sometimes it's very difficult to communicate with them. And Carlos Gorshin, um, he is uh, he is uh, he was grown up in in Brazil, uh, but also I think in uh, in Iran and, and the parents were expatriates in different countries. And um, when he took over the merger between Nissan and Renault, he always said, when we have international projects, we always look that nobody is losing in this project, not that, that they say, ah, Nissan always gets more money, Nissan always uh, uh, is, uh, in a, in a, is in an uh, advantage or, or that they get more, more uh, financial uh, parts. No, he said, no, people keep it in their mind when they lose. 
but when they win, they forget. And what Carlos Goshen always try is to organize a win-win situation between two cultures. And he did never, never go to a business school. Uh, I mean, he was grown up this very multiculturally, and and he's a very good example. I will also upload you um, one interview with him, where he also talks about this cross-cultural differences. And, and and this is somebody I would say who has a global mindset. So this is something like. Uh, you can develop step by step, but this will take a couple of years. I mean, uh, when I'm trying, or when I when I start perhaps a little bit with some of the uh, uh, of the lecture slides, and I'm going to uh, to introduce a little bit also myself and perhaps um, also about about the program. So the idea is that we that we are going with different universities. Um, like Athena School here is inside, like Bolivia, and perhaps a couple of more more universities, that that we are trying to establish uh, where students can interact with people they would never see in their real life, perhaps. I mean, due to the pandemic, it's even more difficult, but to see that the world is interconnected, that industries are interconnected. So. Uh, so when I'm looking in, in my uh, experience, uh, so I mean, I'm a German citizen. I'm, I'm also uh, I have uh, um, international experience of uh, Ireland, um, perhaps Austria, the neighboring country. No? So I said to you, sometimes things are different, even when you go to Austria. Um, now I'm in Brazil and on Sunday, my flight is going to uh, Tech de Monterey to Mexico. I have a professorship there. And so this is my fourth country where I'm living. Yeah. So um, so, and I'm also on on my journey of developing a global mindset. So it also depends on um, the topic of global mindset. That in what kind of position are you? Um, what role do you have? Do you have a local role, perhaps in in the company, or? Um, do you have perhaps a complex task, but not so much relationship with others? So there are also different kinds of global leaders. So there is not the one and only global leader. It depends on what are you doing. But what we can see is that a lot of companies that they are going to invest more money also in training and development. But at the end, it's also for you relevant to get to know that it is a journey. And it is a journey which takes time and where you also need to reflect. So the point is what we are going to start uh, within this program is that you reflect on your behavior, that you reflect on how you perceive information, that you reflect on how do you make sense of it. Because this is a lot culturally driven. And and, and the point is that um, that you also or the, that also people need some kind of personality traits. Like I said, openness to experience. When you're not interested in other cultures, then perhaps the job as an international manager is not the one which makes you satisfied. Um, and and this is this is uh, this is a point uh, where you just uh, also need to think about. And what we also talk about is. is are you with your mindset in the right company? Are you in the right company where you have opportunities, where you can grow, where you can, where you can also, also where you can also experiment, where you can where you have the chance also to make failures? I mean, the point is that look at the biggest companies. Look at uh, also L'Oreal or Panasonic or Samsung. Uh, look at uh, Dunkin' Donuts, uh, McDonald's, and, and how are they called? They all made failures, failures abroad, all of them. And they all have uh, students which have done international business. Uh, so they all have brilliant people, but all of them are making failures. And this is relevant for you. It's not, it's not, so, uh, it's not that you cannot do any failures. The point is um, how to switch the strategy. How to adapt it? So I mean, a lot of you, a lot of you are from, uh, from India now. Yeah? I mean, 
And perhaps some of you have seen the story of Dunkin' Donut. Now, so, so Dunkin', Dunkin Donut is not called, uh, 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 in this case, donuts anymore because in some in some countries they do not serve um, donuts anymore and especially in india so please tell me what is duncan offering in india and perhaps the normal product of duncan donut is to sell donuts with this chocolate uh, uh, i mean why do people uh, I, this is this is just an anecdote why do people like mostly the donuts which are with with uh, with um, with the, with the chocolate there and 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 because people choose it because it is um it is the same amount of of fat and sugar inside and this is where people get uh, satisfied why they don't choose uh, donuts of different other colors or different other points when you will ask people on the street but what is what is uh, Duncan offering in India? Perhaps you can tell it to some of the others. Anybody of the students? So I think you can speak, no? Anybody of the students? Or Aditya? So what is Dunkin' Donut offering in India? So in India, uh, rather than donuts, they are providing shakes, burgers and wraps. Burgers, okay, but everybody thought yeah. Dunkin' Donut is donuts and not burgers. Burgers is McDonald's, burgers is Burger King, burger is yes. Wendy's, but not Dunkin'. So in India, they've chosen a completely different business model like they did in other countries. And this is something for you important to know. You cannot go with your head through the wall with your product. You have an idea, but in some countries you need to adapt your product or you need to adapt your strategy. So, and this is something which is very relevant for you to be flexible. And like I said, to ask questions. Oh, in India, they don't like coffee. In India, they don't eat donuts in the morning. They have some different food. They even have a different culture. I mean, um, I know it a little bit. Uh, so my hometown, my hometown is Düsseldorf, and there's a company located of Henkel washing powder, and they have one center there where they have a lot of people from India. And on Monday morning, they're having breakfast together. They are eating on the floor for one or two hours. They have breakfast, and this is this collectivistic cultures. With Germans, you wouldn't see this. First of all, they would sit at the table and not on the ground. And on the other side, I mean, there might be some some uh, some uh, companies who are doing it, but some not. But it is more on this collectivistic issues. Now, but when you have, for example, uh, people from United States or from Great Britain or from Ireland or from Austria or Australia, they are more individualistic cultures. So so they are not so much with with the whole group. And I mean, the family is also important, but here in Brazil, the family is very important uh, and also in taking decisions. You know? So when you're going to buy a sofa in India, you're going with your family in order to decide. A German is going alone and said, I would like to buy a Porsche and I don't need to ask anybody because I'm doing it. So the consumer behavior and also the way we advertise things might be very different. So, uh, so for example, in Germany, when you look advertisements in the television, um, you will see that they will always give you extra information on quality and they give you extra information on the price um, because the people in Germany have a high risk avoidance. They don't want to buy anything which is not good or where people not say uh, it is of high quality. But for example, in Brazil and some other parts, they do not even name prices. Sometimes people believe what they are telling, but the Germans not, they are risk averse. They don't buy anything. Uh, so you need to persuade them with technical issues, with quality issues or with some other parts. So this might be completely different when you're selling products in Germany. And when you're doing advertisement there now, so um, but but these are only some examples where you can see 
uh, cross-cultural differences. Okay, so so just let me go back to to this uh, to the slides here um, when we are when we are going to to talk about um, when we are going to talk about more on on what is a global mindset and also about our journey. So now we have a little bit more students inside. So once again, within these teams, you might have or you might or look at that I have uploaded the materials here, that that there are the slides, that there are that there might be text which you which you can go through, and also you will receive on this Saturday the codes, the access codes for the learning platform with twelve competencies, and. You have your own individual learning journey and you have some cases which you are going to do with people from other countries. So the faster you are with this individual learning, so you will receive a text with a reflection question you must answer. You will receive another text you must answer. You will see some videos you must answer. So, and this is what you have from week to week to week, always different text and videos related to this 12 competences. And you only can move forward when you answered all competences. So you have, you have some mandatory issues which you must do in order to connect or in order to interact with others. When you don't know anything, what is open openness, then it doesn't make sense that you're going into a group work. So the point is that you have some mandatory issues and then you need to connect with others on, on doing on doing this kind of uh, case study. Um, and, and this is a journey over 12 or more weeks. So you will get access codes for four months. I know that it is 12 weeks, but you will get it longer. The access codes, they work on Saturday and uh, you, will, uh, you will have a manual which I have uploaded that you know how to register and how to, how to get access. When they ask some questions, you can always write me an email. But first, look at the manual, and and if you if you can get uh, uh, if you can get anything there. Okay, so um, so let me just let me just do a, a 20, 20 or thirty more minutes, and then we can talk a little bit also about you and your background and about perhaps uh, what do you expect here, and and that that, that because this is also very relevant uh, for you to see. Uh, about that you are satisfied. I mean, you are the clients, you are the students, and, and what is your uh, expectation also from this global program? So the point is that a lot of virtual teams are failing and uh, global virtual teams or virtual teams, I mean, now we all need to handle all issues with Zoom or Teams. Perhaps it's getting more efficient right now, but also when people are sent abroad, a lot of people are failing and they return after six months, after 12 months, after two years, because they cannot accommodate. They cannot uh, adapt. Um, perhaps they cannot connect with others. People, and I will give you one example um, of, of, uh, of the boss from, uh, from Adidas, and he was earlier the boss of, of Henkel, of Kaspar Röhrstedt. And when he was at Henkel, he always, uh, when he traveled to South America, and Brazil is also a very, very relevant market for Henkel, for the washing powder and glues, um, it was uh, adhesives, as they also called. Um, they, they, uh, um, he always said in the beginning, please, I would like to meet three consumers before I'm going to the subsidiary. Because Kasper Röhrstedt asked the clients, how do you use my product? Uh, what is good? What, um, what can we improve? And I mean, when you see, like, uh, let us take the example of, of washing powder. I mean, uh, I mean, I know it here from Brazil. I think, and I, and I think it, it, it is similar in, um, in, uh, in India, uh, that um, a lot of people don't have a washing machine. And and why should <laughs> why should Henkel then only sell uh, washing powder with six uh, with 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 95 degrees? 
uh, perhaps it doesn't it doesn't make sense in Brazil. I mean, some people might have a washing machine uh, with with temperature, but a lot not. I, I think 70 or even 80 percentage don't have. And so the point is that all of these companies uh, like Henkel, they have a global approach, but also they have a local approach. So for some countries, they are developing products, um, for example, where like perhaps for India, where they said a lot of people needs washing powder without temperature. So they need to adapt their product to India or to Brazil, perhaps in Europe not. And this is what we call it the global local dilemma. So companies are making money with standardized product, but they also need to think about how can we adapt the product to different markets. I will give you another example of Volkswagen. Uh, so Volkswagen um, is a very multinationalized or globalized, we will talk about it later, the, the systematization or differences, um, but they have specific trucks in India, they have specific trucks in Brazil, which you will never see in Germany or in Europe. And the, the, and, and the company comes from Germany. I mean, it is all over the world, like I said, but they are in this global local dilemma. So there is one car here, it is called Volkswagen Gol, G-O-L, Gol. You will never see this car in Germany. It's smaller than a, uh, than a Golf or a Polo. Some of, some of you might know this, this brand, Volkswagen uh, Golf or Polo. And, uh, but this is specifically for this South American market. Chrysler Onyx is a specific market only sold in South America. And Chrysler is perhaps uh, um, also, it is, it is not, not a US company because it's also merged, but, um, but as you can see it, uh, a lot of companies must think about, or I mean, you even have seen it, seen it with the SUVs. I mean, the SUV, it was a couple of years ago, a niche product, and now you have from all brands, if it is Dacia, Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, from all you have this SOV um, cars and they even look similar. I've, I've seen something at LinkedIn, 30 different cars, they, they only have minor differences. So, and this is also perhaps a world product. No? So a world product, which is perhaps a little bit more standardized, like you said, SUV is in the portfolio of each car, ma car maker because it is something which a lot of people like and also to be part of this global community. So uh, like the American dream, like people going to Starbucks and they feel like in Japan, I belong to this American dream. I have Nike shoes, I have Levis 500 and zero, I have, I'm wearing global brands, so I'm part of this global community. I'm a global citizen. And this is also what a lot of people would like to have, to be part of this uh, global community and also um, uh, uh, to, be, to be this global citizen. Perhaps also like you, you also said, hey, this is a good initiative, a global mindset program, and now I get to know different people and I can connect. Mergers and acquisitions, a lot of them fail, but due to people problems. I mean, look at Daimler Chrysler, you know, the German culture and also this American. There were a lot of conflicts between those two um, people from United States. They wanted more money than uh, the middle managers than, than the German ones. Uh, um, uh, there were uh, some cultural issues. Um, so, for example, also in Germany, it is allowed that, that you have your your wife or that you get to know your wife in the company, but uh, this is strictly forbidden in the United States. Uh, uh, no, um, so there are some, some smaller issues, but also we can see that really big companies like Walmart failed in, in Germany. Also, uh, they had a lot of problems in Brazil. So sometimes the concepts do not function. And at the end, it is about to get to know how to analyze 
the local environment, how to analyze it, he, for example, here in Brazil or like in Germany, and how to get this context, how to get to know the context. Um, some of you also might know the company Natura because they have also body shop and in Brazil bought this company. But for all others, like L'Oreal, it's very difficult to enter the Brazilian market because Natura is very strong and they are strong in the social society. They are building schools. Um, they are also involved in politics. And so they are not only making money in Brazil. So when other big companies like L'Oreal from Paris or some others entering Brazil, they say, hey, we don't care about you. What are you doing for us? Are you investing? Or if you only want to make money, go in any other country, but not going into Brazil. And this is something which is very relevant. Sometimes these big players, Unilever or some others, you would say, ah, they are brilliant. They have success all over the world. No. Sometimes they fail in India, sometimes they fail in Brazil or in some other countries. So um, the rules of the global game, of the global, of this global uh, chess is changing and emerging markets are getting stronger and stronger from India, also some companies from Brazil. So these emerging markets from China, so they are playing a different role now. They are, they are not like always US companies like the last 20 or 30 years. No, they also built global brands, Alibaba and, and also uh, uh, the, the company Tata, Tata Nano from, from India. They have worldwide really good reputation and now the rules are changing. And not when you have success in one emerging market, you don't have directly success in the other one. And this is something, like I said, you need to be flexible. You need to have a mindset of adaptation, uh, of a, uh, uh, being agile and any other point. So this is, this is uh, very relevant for you to see that um, it is about to learn. It is to, about to learn from experience. So we will also have one session from Steve Terrell talking on a learning mindset, but also learning from experiences. So, um, what is the global mindset? I think you have heard a little bit about it. It could have an individual person, like a CEO or like somebody of the management board. But even look in the US companies, how many people in US companies or how many people in Fortune 500, so these are the biggest corporations, are not coming from the country of origin, where, so where the headquarter comes from. I mean, um, even at Siemens, I mean, we also have some foreigners, or like I said, in Henkel and some others. So this is a development. And you are the new generation, the young generation. And for you, it's also to look at, hey, we are coming from India, but do we have a chance to work at L'Oreal? And do we have a chance to be in the management board of L'Oreal? then the mindset of L'Oreal must change because we have brilliant people from all over the world, but in some companies it's really difficult because they don't have this global mindset. They said, no, uh, a lot of you also know IKEA. In the beginning, IKEA always sent their Swedish managers. In Germany, it, it was by a Swedish manager for a lot of time, and then they changed it that it was getting a German and some others, but this is a rethinking of companies also of adapting their leadership styles. Um, a lot of Japanese companies are failing abroad because, I mean, you can look at in the Fortune 500, because sometimes they are not adapting so much to the local environment. They send people, Japanese, sometimes I know it in Germany even, they could not speak German and they could also not speak English. But how to adapt to, um, to a country where they only speak Japanese all the time? In Düsseldorf, there's the biggest community of Japanese uh, in, in, in Germany. In, uh, in um, Sao Paulo, it is the biggest one in Brazil. So the point is that in order to establish a global mindset, 
it's also relevant to uh, connect with locals, to learn the local language. And, and, and this is something which is very relevant to connect with people. Otherwise, you're lost in translation. For me as well. In Brazil, uh, I think only 10 percentages can speak English. Even the medical doctors cannot speak English here. So in my, in my area, in Sao Paulo, it might be different, but in my area, not. So I need to learn Portuguese. And this is something which is very relevant. Learn the, the other languages in order to connect. So individual, individual level. Top management team. So how much diversity do we have in the top management team? And what about how to establish a global mindset on this corporate level, on the whole organization? And this is something where we have three kinds of levels. I mean, we even have another level on, on the country level where you say, do people have in India a higher global mindset than in Germany? So I would say Canada might have a higher because they, are, they have... The English speaking, the English speaking uh, people, the, the, the French uh, speaking people, but we, we need to do an, uh, an analysis in order to look at. Even you, like taking Facebook or Instagram, I mean now you can or TikTok, I mean now you can see uh, uh, different um, behaviors in different countries with these short videos. Uh, I mean this is also some way of global connecting people. No, so, so not just seeing uh, um, uh, the TV shows from India, Hollywood, and some others as well. I mean, we also have, I think in Germany, we, all, we now have um, a television channel which shows from India uh, all the, the serials you know, with wedding and all the other parts. So, so they are translating it uh, because we also have an Indian uh, community in Germany. And then now we have a, a new channel. Uh, but with with the local language in, in German. No? So um, CEO level, top management team level, and corporate level, um, and this is exactly what it is about. No? So so different kinds of levels they are integrated. So if or when a company would like to establish a corporate global mindset, it is the sum of the groups or the sum of individuals in order to establish it. So what are the preconditions of a global mindset? People, so first of all, openness on different cultures and markets, but also to know that these cultures and markets might be different. So in Brazil, there are 28 states, 28 different states. There is Sao Paulo, there is Rio de Janeiro. So not only the city, but also the state is called Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro. Um, there is Bahia, Minas Gerais, and many more, Amazonas. You know? uh, so the way business is being done in Brazil in these different states might even be very different. The south of Brazil, the climate is similar to Germany. It's cold, it's, it's, uh, it's snowing in the winter, and when you're going more up, it's getting more more temperature, more warm, uh, and 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 also the culture is different. Uh, getting more people from from uh, from Africa are also there. So the biggest community of Africans outside Africa are in Brazil. So because of the colonies and about this, this, this issues, uh, no, so and this is also relevant. So doing marketing inside Brazil could could even be be different. So, and not just saying Austria, Germany, Switzerland are the same. No, they also are functioning differently. So the point is that you need an openness, you need to know the, the differentiation, but at the end, you need to integrate different markets. And sometimes you have positions in a company like, for example, the EMEA region. EMEA does mean European, Middle East and Asia. And there are some specific positions and some other ones. Um, uh, so the point is that sometimes companies search for managers who are perhaps knowing a couple of regions. Perhaps it might be India, China, Japan, or the Southeast Asia region, where sometimes we have uh, managers coming from because they know different languages. Perhaps they are grown up in different countries and, and know different, different behaviors. And, and they are good to work for these companies. So to look for the bigger and broader picture and to accept the diversity of cultures. 
so there is so so one culture is not the right one and the other one is the wrong one no it is about how to connect two different cultures and in order to look for a win-win situation and this is something which we need to communicate which we uh, must um, negotiate uh, where we need to talk about our doubts and this is something very relevant uh, to see that we now live in this VUCA world. So every day we have different information, supply chain products. Uh, uh, there are some problems in the supplier chain. But in order to develop this global mindset, it's also relevant that you are trying to step out of your comfort zone that you're making new experience, that you sometimes have um, circumstances where you don't know anything, where you need to trust people. And the way trust is built is sometimes completely different. So trust in, in Brazil is built when uh, I'm getting invited after the work in doing a barbecue. Um, even even getting a WhatsApp number in the beginning is quite usual here, but uh, in Germany, perhaps not even. No? So there might be companies where, where people don't share their WhatsApp. Say, no, it's my private number. Why, why, I'm, I, I don't want you in my, in my private contacts. Um, and um, so trust is built on a relationship based. But in some other cultures, uh, in Great Britain, United States, and even also in Germany, it's a little bit more task oriented. You're doing a good job. You're communicating. Um, so I trust you. You keep the deadlines. Um, but in China, you must get to know the, uh, the friends. When you know the friends of somebody, you are in this group and people trust you. When they open up, their group for you, then you, then they trust you. So, um, but but this is, I mean, in Germany, it's a little bit like in the evening or five or six o'clock, okay, I'm going home, we see each, each other uh, tomorrow morning. And perhaps um, I will give you another example. There might be a problem uh, with somebody in Germany going home and then have some problems with, with the car or even having an accident and you call your colleague, hey, sorry, I had some problems with my car. Could you help me? And then perhaps I'm a little bit exaggerating, but the German one would say, hey, please call somebody to fix it. I'm now having my family and I don't have time. And the person from Brazil would say, no, uh, where are you? I'm coming directly. My family can wait because this is relationship based. And this is how it's built trust. Um, no, so, so, so the trust definition is very different in different countries. And this is what we talk about. You will have this competencies to learn. You will get to know uh, uh, different areas of trust. And in this case, um, so um, which is relevant for you to, to see it a little bit more differentiated. No, so differentiated is the right word to see that Germans and French people might be in some issues very different, but in some they are quite equal. I mean, they are Western Europe, but um, also uh, there are a lot of conflicts between them. I mean, there are a lot of uh, uh, mergers and acquisitions or, or joint ventures between Germany and, and French people. And you would say, oh, they are so close to each other. They are at the border, but there are a lot of conflicts even and not always, uh, um, not always, uh, uh, is there success within these this companies? So a global mindset. Hopefully, with some of these slides, you will get to know it is relevant. It is relevant for an international business executive, uh, but it is also something which is time-consuming, and um, where you must have also more knowledge, where you must see the complexity and uh, where you need to analyze, where you need to have methods or tools in order to apply. And um, 
I mean, there are different ways of what companies can do in order to establish a global mindset, if it is within the vision or mission or within the, the values of the company. Um, is it made in Germany? Is it made by Siemens? I mean, also the slogans, sometimes they change no? or, or, or the, the branding itself. Uh, I mean, look at Siemens Medicine Technic in Southeast Asia. They have completely different products than in Germany. Uh, and so and so this is a way of how to look to organize this worldwide active uh, companies and also to look at this cultural differences. Um, from the organization perspective or structural perspective is also to look at, okay, does the company need a so-called matrix structure or how to organize meetings? No? Always in the headquarter of in Munich for Siemens, or perhaps one year in New Delhi, the other one in Sao Paulo, the next one in New York. So this is also very relevant. Um, if anybody would describe me how it would look like in Brazil, I, I, I wouldn't, I, I could not imagine it. So I mean, now we have this COVID crisis. But the point is that also to be visibly there and to see the infrastructure, to see, to see the institutions is very relevant because it opens the eyes of cultural differences. And sometimes you say, oh, we have problems with our supplies. But why? We paid them and everything. No, um, there might be different other issues which you must see. So the international manager job, you can do some parts like we are doing here, uh, we are doing online, but sometimes also you need to connect and you need to be there. And like I said, how to build trust online, how to build trust to, to uh, when in Brazil people are spending time and doing barbecue and now it's not possible due to COVID, um, but how to build trust completely with new suppliers now in this world. So, um, and this is very difficult because we all have our trust uh, rucksack or our trust bag. Um, and, and this is something which we don't think about. Uh, and, and no, but, this, but uh, these are all points which you need to take into, uh, into the consideration and in the point. Yeah, so uh, we have different, personality traits. Uh, a lot of people talk about the so-called big fives. Now, nah? and the big fives, there's an abbreviation of ocean. O is for openness, C is for conscientiousness. Um, then we have extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. I mean, uh, there are a lot of different um, uh, diff uh, there's a lot of research which which has been done about uh, Donald Trump and his <laughs> and his big fives and his personality traits. No? So uh, you would say, okay, uh, from this neuroticism or uh, no? so so he's sometimes not uh, not in control or anything. But he was a president, and on the other side, um, I mean. Uh, uh, perhaps for some positions, some personality traits are more relevant than, than for others. But as you can see, two of them are highlighted here with, with, with the red color. E uh, even when we take red color, uh, it's also culturally driven. No? So, so the, the, the color of red might have a different, a different connotation in Germany or in Italy and perhaps even in India or in Brazil. No? So... So when we take different colors of blue or green or yellow, this is also culturally driven. And this is what you also need to think about when you're doing international marketing or when you're selling a product abroad. But openness and agreeableness is very relevant when you have people or global leader or an international manager which must have a high value. So you will see a lot of personality traits or big five tests in the internet. And on openness, you must have a higher value and agreeableness. All the others 
are perhaps sometimes dependent on the culture where you're going at or in, in the region. Sometimes this, this extroversion is very relevant in the United States, but in Japan it would be better to be a little bit more quiet and to listen more and not to be very um, uh, very loud and, and, and this typical salesperson. This is not, this is counterproductive. But agreeableness is something like you are not always right. You, you make failures and uh, you can understand it. And you can also say, oh, okay, I did not know that. So now we need to change it. And, 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 you are, and, and this is a little bit of communicating with others. So this agreeableness is sometimes where you need to listen to others and that, that you're not always somebody like, oh, I did my MBA at Harvard Business School, so I always am right and I know uh, marketing better than you. No, agreeableness is completely the difference. It's about to say, okay, I need more information, I need to talk with people and I need, I need also to, to switch sometimes uh, what I was thinking about. And openness, I think it should be clear after our first uh, minutes here why it is very relevant. No, so not to be biased. I mean, we are we are all we are all biased. No, so when I'm when I when I'm listening to this Brazilian news um, in Germany and always COVID and always uh, um, and always problems with the favelas and then people are are shot are shot in anything and uh, there's also a bias. So the point is, what I'm talking about is, you need to make your own experience. You need to go abroad with open eyes. Okay, in some situations you must be careful. This is very relevant. Okay, uh, it depends where you go, but you must make your own experience. No? So you have you have uh, you have people talking about some issues, but it's very relevant to have first-hand experiences. First-hand is your own experience to go abroad and to look and to see and to perceive and to interpret. I mean, even there might be some some misperceptions, but uh, in some areas it's very relevant uh, 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 to have your own perspectives there. Um, yeah, so when we look at this history and when we look at why or, 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 or what is the theory behind the global mindset, and I would like to give you a couple of um, two kind of series, and, and this is perhaps uh, what we what we will do today, and not more. But that you will understand that in different companies you need a different mindset, and not everybody needs a global mindset. Not everybody in the company needs a global mindset. So in some areas it's good to have a higher value, but in some others it's not really necessary. So um, so there is one. Um, Oh, there are two authors like here Bartlett and Goshal, uh, which were from uh, Harvard and INSEAD, and they, they did a lot of research. And they, 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 they checked a lot of companies, worldwide active companies, and they said, okay, let us structure it. Let us look at what is their influence and why are they differently organized. So they looked at three different kinds of variables. They looked at Companies which might which uh, might be uh, very ver which might be very um, so let me check it which might be very uh, standardized or which look for global efficiency global integration so a standardized product some other companies which are more on this local area so you need to locally respond you need to locally adapt. And also, what is the way of dealing with innovations worldwide? So where do the innovations come from? Are they coming from the headquarter? Are they coming from the subsidiary? Or, or how is it organized? No? So, um, so the point is that we have four kinds of company types. No? So we have the so-called the international company, and there are when you look at the axis, so we have low on standardization or low, or low on global integration and low on local responsiveness and adaptations. So take a look at these two kinds of companies like Harley-Davidson and Nespresso. 
So a lot of you might know the company Nespresso and the coffee and the, the coffee capsules and uh, that they have Lungo or they have uh, different others, but they don't adapt it to Brazil, they don't adapt it to Germany and they don't adapt it to Australia or anywhere else. So they have a capsule system which comes from Switzerland, from Lausanne. They have different machines and they have this product which they are selling all over the world. No, so, so uh, and the same is for Harley Davidson. So Harley Davidson is uh, the American dream. So and Harley Davidson is selling motorcycles and they are not adapting it to Mexico or to Brazil or to Germany and also not to India. So they have a product and they say, buy it or leave it. But we don't make a specific version for the German market or for the Mexican market. We don't care. We sell the American dream. And this is something which is very relevant. So Lausanne or here in the United States, they organize everything. They are controlling everything. When they have a new motor or a new innovation, then they send people abroad. So Nespresso sent people from Switzerland and then they said, ah, okay, we have a new system. We are training you in that. The same is for Harley Davidson. So they don't adapt it to this uh, local market. Different other companies, which are more called a multinational company or multinational firm, they are very high on local adaptation. This is McDonald's. This is Walmart. This is Unilever. These are also some beer companies. Now, I mean, you must imagine in Germany, they have, I think, roughly 5,000 different breweries. I mean, even in Düsseldorf, I think they have roughly 10 different kinds of beer. When I'm looking here in Brazil, they have the big brands. They have this uh, AB and Bath, it's called. Um, they have uh, uh, Stella Artois, which is from Belgium. So, so Belgium and Brazil is together. And then they have uh, four or five different other global brands, Heineken and some others. So uh, here there is not so much culture of different breweries. It might be different in, in, in bigger cities, but here in the small city where there is even where they're even producing beer in, in my city where I'm living here. Uh, uh, but but uh, there are not so many different ones. I mean, you know it when you go to Munich, they have uh, different beers than in northern Germany or western or eastern. I mean, look at Jintao, the beer in China. It was also by German brewers. No? So, so they have implemented the big brewery and Jintao is the beer which is sold most worldwide. So it's not Heineken. It's not uh, any other. It's Jintao. No? You can Google it. <laughs> so they are selling most of the beer. Um, okay, so Unilever Germany has their own products and Unilever United Kingdom has their own products and Unilever in uh, Brazil has their own products. So very localized. I mean, they might have some brands, some, some, some global issues as well, but the point is that especially the food and the retail industry is very much locally adapted. The food in India is different to Brazil, to Germany, to France, to Italy, and to Mexico. So it's very difficult to internationalize a multinational company. So for Walmart, they need to adapt. They did not adapt a lot in Germany. They failed. They said, buy our products. And the Germans said, no, why? I don't want to buy five liters of milk. I'm, I, I would like to buy milk all three days, fresh milk, one liter. And everybody is going each two or three days in a shop and buying one fresh liter milk. Uh, this, is, this is the consumer behavior. No? And there are also a lot of other companies. Cement industry, CMEX. CMEX is one of the biggest companies from, from Mexico. So the cement in Alaska has a different composition than in Dubai. No? So the, the, the cement industry is very localized industry because the composition is different. But 
food and retail and clothing industry. So the, so the, the things we wear, uh, not, I'm not only telling for weddings, <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but also uh, in other circumstances is very localized. No, I mean, uh, look at the temperature here in Brazil. I'm sweating because I'm a little bit sick, but also it's it's 30 degrees outside, and uh, and and uh, and here people are wearing different clothes. I I I have never worn the last five weeks long trousers. So I have. I'm sorry to say that I have flip flops here because the weather it's quite very hot, and 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 this is uh, where we have different uh, different clothes. So. Hennessy Mau H and M, Hennessy Mauritz, they have different clothes in Northern Europe or Southern Europe. They might have some similar products, or for example, the product of Zara. Some of you know it, but they might even be also very different because of the temperatures. What is a global firm? A global firm is very, very high on global integration, global standardization. So take a look at Airbus or Boeing. What are they doing? They are doing assembling. They are buying the, the turbines, I don't know, from United States, the, the seeds from China, some other parts from India, uh, the cockpit from Germany. They are assembling. And they are looking worldwide. Ah, okay, the seeds we negotiate uh, very cheap. The other one, so they have a very dominant headquarter and they know exactly what's happening all over the world. So they have they have um, people there looking all over the world and buying stuff in order to look at how, how best could it be assembled. A lot of car producers are also global companies, which are not in this, in this definition of global, are the so-called transnational. And this is Daimler-Benz. This is Volkswagen. Why? Volkswagen, Daimler-Benz, and I think also Tata Nano, they have a different portfolio. They have different products in different markets. The VW Gold for the South American market is not sold in Europe. And you will have also different cars in India or perhaps for the Asian markets, which you perhaps will never see in Europe or even not see in South America or in Africa. So these companies, are in this global local dilemma. Vodafone, telecommunication industry, the contracts and, uh, and the connection is completely different in France or in Germany or in United Kingdom or anywhere else. So they offer different kinds of contracts if it is 5G or 4G, um, if, if people receive uh, a smartphone uh, uh, with Netflix, without Netflix, I don't know, different, different issues um so it's so completely different no? so um so the point is that when you keep now when you keep now this uh different companies into your mind no? so when you have this uh, okay let me check it again so you can you can still see my 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 screen yeah so when so when you have this Four kinds of. Um, now we're not. Now we're not. Ah, okay, you, you don't. You don't. Uh, okay, I need to share again. Wait a second. Thank you. Um, so when you have this four kinds of company types, it also needs four kinds of different mindsets. Harley Davidson is very U.S centric it is also called what we have in the next model it's called ethnocentric so they don't allow that the germans said hey why are we not developing a motorcycle for the german market they say we don't care we don't care and they are not open minded and but they are very efficient they are good what they do but they don't need people with a global mind because they don't care there might be some parts perhaps in developing and some other part where they said, okay, we are open-minded to other, to other nations, but normally they have a dominant product and they would like to sell it. And this is how it is. So when you have this four kinds 
of company types. And we are going now on the next slide. Uh, so for example, um, so there are some pros and cons of, of uh, international, multinational, global, transnational. You can look at your own later. Uh, so um, here you have all the companies uh, uh, with the logos inside. But only one question for you. Why is Adidas a global company by definition? Anybody? Adidas, global company. Oh, good evening, sir. Uh, can I give good it evening. a shot? Yes, please. Uh, so I think probably Adidas uh, is look is highly globally integrated since it has uh, several options where it can set up its factories and to produce goods. So they're looking to find the um, looking to look at they're looking at locations which will give them the most cost benefit. But at the same time, since their products are uh, pretty um, shoes are products which are quite universal in nature, so they don't need to uh, locally cater to each and every single culture around the world. Yeah, so they are very standardized products. No? So what about... Thank, thank you very much. No? Uh, I, I could not see now your, your name uh, here uh, because I have only the small window, but thank you very much. No? So they are globally integrated. Uh, I mean, perhaps the branding they're doing in the United States, uh, shoe production perhaps in China or India. or no? So I, I don't know exactly uh, which of them. I mean, Adidas has more than only shoes. Now they are doing bags, they are doing clothes and anything, caps. Now, so they're doing a lot, a lot different other, uh, other parts as well. Now, so, uh, but uh, what about, I mean, you can answer it or anybody else. But uh, what Samsung? about... Samsung? Yes, yes, please. Samsung. Yes, please. yes, Samsung. Samsung. Yes, sir. What about Samsung? Samsung is also a global... A global company as well. Yeah. But but I would say they are they are also um, going into the area of a transnational company. Why? So what? So so where where, where do you come? I, I don't know if they have a call right now. <laughs> but but where, but where are you located? I'm from the Bahamas. Ah, you are from the Bahamas. Okay, so what so what kind of products can you buy from Samsung at the Bahamas? Um, we um, in the Bahamas we can get like Sam's um, cell phones and tablets. Do you get washing machines, dryer? Yes, we get those products as well. Okay, so and, so like, so and, and television. Yeah, so so do so so uh, um, so thank you very much. No? So so we have some d different products, but the point is, do you think that Samsung is going into the direction of a transnational with local adaptation? Do you think that Samsung also has products in different markets which might be different and not only standardized? I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm also having a. <laughs> Uh, and you see, you said uh, the tablets, but are there, do you think that the washing machines are all over the world the same size, the same technology? Do you, I mean, I've seen here Samsung phones, which looks equal to this one. This is an S11. And in Brazil, I think this is roughly $1,000. Uh, and I think in Brazil, you can get a Samsung phone, which looks similar but with less technology for $200. So the point is that Samsung might have very much standardized, and perhaps this was their strategy all over the time, but they also are going now into serving in different countries 
different products and, and, and different different adaptations. And this is something where we can see. I mean, when I'm going back to the slides, um, I'm going back to the uh, to the slides right now. Wait a second. Um, that we have seen that Samsung they started 30 years ago as an international company, and they are they 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 are from South Korea, and and also Samsung they had a very important manager, the CEO, and this one said a. Hey, I mean, I mean, I have, I have, I have a case study. Uh, let me let I, I will, I will put this case study also here in this uh, later. And and the boss from Samsung said, "Hey, we are a good player in the Asian markets. We are doing a lot in Japan. We are selling products in in China or neighboring countries. But the Samsung culture or the South Korean culture or this Asian culture was long time continuous improvement." make it cheaper but the point is why why did uh, samsung getting this global recognition because they said we need design we need marketing and we need the so-called hybrid strategy so what the ceo uh, from samsung did 15 years ago or 20 years ago said um we need to change a lot within our organization. And not only the elder people get more money, we need to have in incentives. If people are 30 and they are brilliant, they can also be getting top managers in a couple of years. Uh, we have one supplier and the supplier we normally had for 40 years. No, we're taking a supplier which is most efficient, but this is without the Asian culture of having long-term relationships. So the point is Samsung gets very successful because they change the way they think. They change the way they normally work. And this was with a lot of resistance from these elder people, with elder generations said, no, we always do it this way. And But the people said, no, we need a good product. We need to spend money on marketing issues. We need to fight against Apple or some other companies. And this is why they why they get this global branding because of opening their mindset away from Asia and to connect good things from the United States and Asia. And then said we are now having a hybrid strategy of not only having a product which is cost efficient, but also of high quality. So the combination of both and not just neither nor. And, and this is very relevant to see that people I mean, a Samsung phone is not it's not a cheap phone. I mean, it's a little bit, uh, it's not so expensive like an Apple phone, but you will get a lot of other brands which are more cheaper. No? And But but the point is, they said, we would like to have a very good uh, Android system. Okay, if you like it or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, but, um, but, but the point is that because of the CEO, and when you read this, you will see that, there is a change over the generation because this person was more open minded to the world and then saying we need to open up our old structures in order to get this global brand or global reputation of, of, of our parts. So the point is that when we go into this international, multinational, global, transnational, so international companies are a lot top down oriented. So top does mean Harley Davidson, United States, is telling Mexico what to do. They are only transferring competence. They are telling Germany uh, how many machines to sell. So they are not communicating with them. They are just top down. They tell them what to do, how to do, and when to do. This is an international, but they are successful. The, so there's not so much criticism, but um, it works for some companies, but perhaps not for all of them. When we have the multinational, and I will have a story of McDonald's in one of the next slides. You can see that McDonald's is brilliant in adapting their products to different markets. They're better than Burger King. They're better than, than any other. Um, even they had success in, uh, in Israel. <laughs> so, so Israel, um, people like 
fast food because they have a fast food culture on the street since 150 years. They like American movies, but a lot of like Starbucks, they failed. Kentucky Fried Chicken, they failed. Burger King, they failed. McDonald's, they started to fail, but then they needed to buy this halal certificate. So this is a certificate before you uh, kill an animal that you need to pray and anything. And this was very costly. This was five million dollars to have the sign there on the door. We are keeping this and then uh, uh, McDonald's could stay. And they adapted their product as well, uh, uh, um, like uh, like like different different styles or different types uh, with uh, like falafel burger and, and some other ones in this country. Okay, so but they don't carry at each other in multinational. The boss from Unilever doesn't care about uh, uh, Germany, about UK, about France. So they're not communicating so much. So um, and this, these are some of the negative points of a multinational, but they always have a local market. Uh, global company top down. Adidas headquarter tells, oh, we are going to do marketing in Germany and perhaps a little bit with United States. Uh, the production is in China. Um, I don't know. Some of the um, some of the products we are generating in other countries. Uh, oh, IT, IT has been done from India because they are brilliant in IT, but we are not doing marketing with India because they are better in IT and, and we say who is going to do which parts in the world. And so I'm, I, no, I would like to show it with some examples about how this global uh, functions. And the transnational is a globally integrated network. It is some kind of ideal model. No, so um, there is not a headquarter anymore and good experiences or good innovations from one country can be put into others. Look at the company of, of uh, L'Oreal. So L'Oreal uh, has 40 product development teams and uh, because the makeup in India, makeup in China, in Brazil, in, in, uh, in France, in the uh, United States is different. So they have 40 product development teams worldwide. And they are taking uh, multicultures for product development. For new product development, they say, you can work for L'Oreal when you are grown up in different countries and when you are thinking out of the box. Now I'm telling you about new product development. For some others, it might be different, but for new product development. And they have developed in Asia a so-called two-in-one cream. It is a whitening cream and it is a sun blocker. And this they especially develop in Asian countries. Yeah? So, so people perhaps in China, they, they say, okay, uh, we don't want this skin very much with, with color, a little bit more whitening and, and anything. And they said, okay, we develop this cream and this we transfer to Europe in another cream. So the point is that sometimes we have good developments in some parts of the world and in some other parts they can be implemented. Um, for example, some of you might know Panasonic. Yeah, Panasonic is located in, in Japan and Panasonic um, has a lot of issues like um, electronic devices and anything, but they also are doing washing machines like Samsung. But the point is that the kitchen size from Japan to China is different. So you would say in Japan everything is smaller because of this huge amount of people and when you see Tokyo, no. The point is that the kitchen size in China is smaller than in Japan. So they needed to adapt their washing machines to a smaller size. This was one point. The other point is <laughs> that in China, the people are washing their underwear with their hands. You would say, okay, hmm, this, is, this is typically there. And then they developed a system there uh, to make it more hygienic the machine, the washing machine, to make it more hygienic. 
what they developed, the hygienic issues, the technology, what they developed in the washing machine, they could take later in the refrigerator in Japan. So the point is that um, when we talk about a learning organization or this globally integrated, that one good experience can be uh, transferred to another one. And we, this, this is very relevant. And this is something which is also relevant for multinational corporations in order not to do double work and to, 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 to produce uh, a double kind of products in different countries. Uh, so, so this is one of the negative uh, aspects of a multinational, but the transnational tries to work with this experience and to share it from one point to the other. Okay, now we have here this McDonald's example. So perhaps um, I'm switching over every one to two minutes on the next slide, but you can read it and you can see why McDonald's is a multinational corporation. It's very locally adapted and it's also relevant for a multinational corporation that when you have the food industry, the clothing industry, that you always have a local manager. So this is not good to say we have an American citizen serving the German market to sell burgers and some other parts. You need, because the local adaptation of marketing mix, of, uh, of, um, of food, uh, even for Walmart, they also had a US, US citizen in the beginning in Germany, then they changed it, but also it was a little bit too late. Closing industry, a lot of companies failed because they transfer locals uh, so, so, so from, from the United States is a company Gap. They failed in Germany because of taking somebody from the United States. So for these companies, you always need to take uh, a local leader. OK, yeah, please read it and then we move on. Okay, I will move on. Okay.
Yeah, any comments from you? So a multinational company, McDonald's, high on local adaptation. So do you have any more examples perhaps from other countries which are not here? Perhaps you know. Any comments? Okay, not. Yeah, so for example, um, uh, Starbucks. Uh, Starbucks also, um, they did not completely fail in, Austri in Australia, like you have seen it here. So um, sometimes we also have um, different, so, so for example, Starbucks in Australia is only successful in the bigger cities, uh, Perth, Melbourne, Sydney, uh, because there are a lot of uh, travelers, uh, US citizens or people from Japan or from, 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 from Southeast Asia, but for, for a lot of these people from Australia or Australian citizens, it's too sweet and perhaps too expensive. And uh, they also had uh, Italian coffee before. The same it is in Israel. Israel also Starbucks failed because they also had uh, this uh, this Italian coffee. So uh, the point is that sometimes companies are coming too late. So a lot of you know Uber perhaps. And when Uber tried to enter China, China had already some kind of Uber. Uh, because um, they imitated some kind of this product and they waited too long in order to enter the market. So sometimes this is also the point that uh, you also need to take risk with some of those uh, parts being first mover perhaps. And and, and, and in some countries perhaps it, 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 it did not work. I think in one of the South American market, Boli uh, I don't know if it is in Bolivia, uh, I don't know if Sergio, are you still inside? I think not, but I but I know that in in one of the countries in uh, South America that also McDonald's uh, uh, was not welcome. I, I need to Google it perhaps again, but this was perhaps a, a, a big issue. So um, factor factors encouraging standardization. It's a little bit more this economies of scale, or where we say ah we have a global competition, so we need to standardize. No, like Airbus, Boeing, so this high on standardization, uh, where we where we need to look to make to make the product more cheaper. The more we learn, the, um, the cheaper it must get. On the other side, we have this adaptation of products, like looking at the infrastructure or the standards, the local content requirements. So, for example. When I'm going uh, to a supermarket in Brazil, I'm going home with six or seven plastic bags. Uh, but in Germany, in a lot of supermarkets, and I think also starting in this year, I'm not sure because, because I have not been there in the beginning of the year. I entered Brazil in, in December. Um, I think it is mostly forbidden, the plastic bags. So, And this is what you need to adapt local content requirements like um, CO2 emissions or anything or, no, or using plastic. So this is uh, relevant. Uh, yeah, local competition forces a lot for adaptation as well. No? Um, I mean, look in the beginning of when, when Walmart and Carrefour entered in India and also Metro Cash and Carry, Metro, perhaps some of you might know Metro, um, cash and carry so the point is that also in india it was a lot with this corner shops in the beginning and the infrastructure was not established for this big supermarkets i mean now we had it uh, now now after 20 30 years but in the beginning it was very difficult to organize the supply chain the distribution channels for this big players like walmart uh, Carrefour, uh, and also metro yeah so um, I would say that we are now going to 
to stop the session. Um, there are still 33 inside. I know it's a little bit more um, late in India, but this was the first session. So uh, the introduction, it was a little bit longer, uh, but I hope you could understand a little bit about global mindset in the beginning. You can also give, give a feedback on one or two people, what you like today and the examples. Uh, so I will also give the next session and then there will be some other professors from other countries. So not, no, so not only that you have this, this German guy sitting in Brazil next week, I'm sitting in Mexico, uh, but anyhow, um, and that you get the access codes on Saturday and that you get familiar with the manual of the learning platform and that you start to go through the text, the 12 competences, and that you are going into this group work where you will get to know other people, where you organize the case together, and then you see, ah, oh, there are problems with different time zones. Why is this other guy not doing anything? We need to do it, there's a deadline. And then you can see the cultural differences in communication, uh, how difficult it is even to organize a meeting. But this is real international business that, uh, somebody is not talking directly and no, so there will be conflicts this is clear there will be conflicts the point is how you handle it and this is a little bit of the learning which you can get out of this by the sessions we do weekly but also how can you cooperate with others in the platform and how, and how are you solving a case or how are you going step by step on your direction to the next job international manager in a couple of years or next year or next semester but something like that. Okay, yeah, you can you can give me also some uh, some feedback about today. I know I talked a lot, but it is the introduction session that you get a little bit of theoretical background. Yeah, perhaps somebody can just say something. It was uh, fantastic, sir. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody. Uh, so, so in, in, in Germany sometimes, but I also had get some some negative feedbacks that I sometimes pick people. <laughs> um, I I, rem I remember a session. Of, uh, this is just an anecdote, but I remember a session where I was sitting in a uh, in a global classroom in Germany, uh, thirty students from China and then the rest from Europe, and I was I was having a question, and the first two rows were only sitting the Chinese students. And then I had a question and nobody looked at me because they are not familiar to answer it or they don't know it. So they did not keep eye contact. And this was the other one they did, but the other one also looked at the desk and this was a cultural issue. Uh, no, so, um, so, so they are not willing to talk and anything. No, uh, and, 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 and. Um, but but this is uh, sometimes um, yeah and, and uh, different. Ne? So, so also that uh, my experience was also um, with Chinese students. You must do a group work. They cannot easily do. A, they're not going to do a presentation in front of the class. They are not feeling comfortable because they don't know it in in, in Europe. It's more individual presentation. You are alone there and you need to do it, but they are not feeling comfortable and and but you need to you need to give them the possibility to to learn it to learn the different education system and and uh, i mean there's also not the one and only education system but you can see that there are different styles and and also within learning some people learn more with videos or with listening some other people learn more through reading a book uh, the next one is learning by conversation with another student, talk about it. So, and this is what we're going to do here. There's a lot of diversity here. And uh, yeah, perhaps anybody else? So one or two parts, and then uh, we have the session next week. So Mr. Robens, you are from my class. Are you still inside? Yes, I'm still here. I mean, most of the things you know, I think, no? from the last mess. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, I can just um, add to the feedback which you have already gotten. So it okay. was good. Yeah, thank you very much. So it is also recorded. You can look at it later. No? Get familiar with the topic. Uh, uh, 
I mean, you, you can see it here within Teams. I've uploaded some parts. I will upload the Samsung case. Um, I mean, at the end, you will receive a certificate. And the certificate will also be where you get the logos from different schools which are participating here that you see uh, it was a global classroom. Uh, so uh, and, and I'm going to organize it now uh, and but. The lectures are good and we can communicate, but you need to do the parts in the platform. You need to learn every week. You need to you need to communicate. You need to individually learn in the group learning. So you need to go step by step of learning competences to apply it. And at the end to write a short report on how you personally developed due to this course, how you develop in competence. Perhaps you can give examples of your group work because you will not always have the same group. You will have always different groups. You are choosing a topic in the group. Then we wait till there are five people or three to five people and then you're doing your case study. And perhaps in the next week you are together with different other people. And, and this is what you're going to do week by week by week. And, and this will give you uh, hopefully some points of thinking differently, experience it because this will be your future work. A multicultural workforce, you're communicating with Europe. Uh, you don't know why other people communicating it very specifically or some people are not or, or talking with body language and you couldn't understand. So this is real international business about how we communicate, how you interpret, when are you asking questions or are you never asking questions? So this is something which you need to learn. It is a learning experience. And, and now you started today a little bit on this new topic. OK, so thank you very much. So now there is, uh, it was a little bit longer. Uh, normally we will have roughly 90 minutes. Now it was a little bit longer, but um, now there's lunchtime here. It is, uh, in, in Brazil, it's very relevant that, that you don't do any a lot of classes during lunchtime. Uh, in some other countries, it might be different. Uh, but um, anyhow, I hope that the time is more or less convenient. Perhaps we can adapt it in the next couple of weeks. We will look at how many people were there. Today, roughly 40, 41. I counted 42 students. Uh, so we will see. Thank you very much and have a nice evening wherever you are. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a great lunch. Thank you so much.